Welcome, everybody. Today, we're going to be going over the Kunkel sound in my first installment of uh, getting the sound, getting the drum sound, whatever you want to call it. Um, this one hasn't been done before, which is why I'm doing it. I was going to do it for Dreams, or not Dreams, the album's Rumors. The song is called Dreams. I was going to do it for Rumors, but uh, Art of Drumming had already done a, a wonderful replication of the Fleetwood Mac drum sound, and I feel like I couldn't um, reach that level in this little room here. But anyway, we're going to be going over drum choice, and with drum choice, you have to go over tuning, and with tuning, you have to go over mic placement, and then we're going to go over the cymbal choice that I've got going on, and we're going to go over some stuff in Logic. So it should be fun. We're going to try to get as close to the original sound as we possibly can. Obviously, different albums have different sounds, but we're going to try our best, or you can watch me try my best. Um, so I say we get to it. We're going for 1970 to 1972 in Russ Kunkel's sound, so that's Sweet Baby James, that's Tapestry, that's Saturate Before Using, that's Blue by Joni Mitchell, that's Harry Chapin's Heads and Tails, that's the Dave Mason and Cass Elliott album, and there's a whole host of others I'm leaving out because, frankly, I can't remember them. That's how fantastic this guy is. All right, it's time-lapse time. Let's do the time warp. guys enjoyed the time warp a um, couple key things that were going on in there is um, you saw me take all the microphones out of the way and that's important because I I think you want your kit to be set up the way you prefer it before you go and start putting microphones in because that way the kits gonna be more comfortable and the mics are gonna sound good in relation to how your kit is set up so that's why you saw me do a couple of play tests in there halfway through making sure the crucial parts, your crash is set up right. You don't want to be reaching. You want it to be at the right angle where if you want, you know, you can you can crash on it. You can ride on it. You can hit the bell. You can do all sorts of funky, funky stuff like that. And then your hats, it's important your hats are set up comfortably because you don't want to, again, unless it's very specific because there are some records out there where the hats are all the way away to reduce bleed into your snare mic. So the hats, the snare, it's all important. Set it set it all up before you put your microphones up. Because if you set your microphones up and your kit is uncomfortable, you're not going to be comfortable and you're not going to sound as good because guess what? You aren't comfortable. So it's important to do that. And um, so with that, let's let's talk about the drums here we got going on. So I've got my 66 68 Red Sparkle Rogers with a Fullerton uh, 72 14 by 10 edition. That's right, 13 by 9, 14 by 10. Floor is a 16 by 16. Snare drum. Um, let's see. I'm gonna pick it up. I'm gonna pick it up. I'm gonna set the microphone down. I'm gonna pick it up. Snare drum's just a regular 14 by 5 and a half, uh, 64 power tone, chrome over brass. Um, works great for stuff like this. It's on, it's my most used snare. If you've ever watched my videos, I can guarantee you there's a probably a 95% chance that this snare is used on that. Um, kick drum is a 22 by 14. Uh, it's got a Remo Power Stroke P3. And uh, for the toms, we're going Coded Emperor over Coded Diplomat which creates this really nice, it's a nice warm sound. And if you tune them up just a little bit, I'm not talking like a jazz tuning, I'm talking medium, medium low, they get a nice growl and a nice attack, which is important for a sound like this because if you listen to um, Doctor My Eyes in those overdubbed fills at the end, and just on that record in general, you can hear that they, they have a, a sharp attack, but they've got this low rumble that comes through the microphones. 
Snare drum is just, uh, like I said before, 14 by 5.5, chrome over brass, uh, ambassador vintage coated on top over your regular Remo Hazy 300. Floor tom's the same thing. Remo, we got, uh, I think I already said a Power Stroke P3. I'm pretty sure I did. If I did, I'll edit this out, and I'll just cut to the cymbals. And then we're going to do, uh, yeah, we're going to do the cymbals now. So for the cymbals, um, pretty much I have two sets of cymbals that I used. I mean, by two sets, I mean two sets of crashes and rides. Um, for this specific sound, for anything pre, like, 1978, unless it's very specific in the recording, I use these, um, actually not pre-1978, but you get the gist. I use these crusty old Zildjans. Um, this is an 18-inch crash. I don't know when it's from. I just know that it's crusty, and that's that's important for this. This is a 21-inch ride. Um, I picked this up from Hawthorne Drum Shop uh, two years ago, and it is it is by far my favorite ride for stuff like this because you can crash on it. It's got a nice bell. The crash isn't too gongy. Like I know some heavier rides have a gongier crash. It's just it's perfect for stuff like this. And this is a 20-inch. Um, I think a 60s Zildjian. I'm not sure about... I'm not a Zildjian guy, um, but I love it. It's got a nice wash. You can ride on it. You can ride on all of these cymbals depending on what the song calls for. And we're going to talk about that later on. And these hats, these are the only hats I ever use, pretty much. They're just 15-inch, 70s Peisty 2002s. And they're really heavy, which for me, I'm not a big fan of, but I don't have you know, oogles of money to go out and buy, you know, 60s Zildjian 15-inch hi-hats. Um, but it, it requires them to be played with more of a finesse than you would, a, I guess, a normal weight hi-hat. So with all that being done, we're going to talk about the mic placement. Okay, and for the microphones, I've got the, uh, the SE Electronics V-Beats on the rack toms, this V7X is going to go on the floor tom. Um, I've got an Electro Voice RE320 on the snare drum. And I've got the V-Beat on uh, on the, not the V-Beat, the V-Kick. The V-Kick, I've got the V-Kick on the kick drum, obviously. And the overheads, uh, which I don't think you can see in the frame, are SE7s, I believe. And for a room mic, I've got the, um, whatever their ribbon microphone is, the SE, I can't remember for the life of me. Um, but I'm going to talk about the mic placement um, pretty soon. All right. So for the kick drum on these records, um, you do hear that the head, the front head of the kick drum is off. That's very common um, for this, I don't know, era of music for the 70s in general. Um, but I'm going to take creative liberty and leave the front head on because A, I don't feel like taking the front head off and B, I prefer this sound a lot better for stuff like this. I find it's a lot more warmer, which is what you want, which is what I prefer, not exactly what everybody wants, but it's what I prefer in a kick drum. And to compensate for the head not being off due to my creative liberty, I have placed the V-beat probably about three fingers away or three or two fingers away from the center of the kick drum and the center of the kick drum is important to note because it's in line with the bass drum beater and that's going to give you the attack that you want because on these records there's not a lot of body in the kick drum it's a it's not a so that's important and I'll put in a little I'll do a little overhead clip of all the microphones um, just so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about because I know it's a little hard from just the one angle and I don't have multiple cameras. So with the overheads, I've got my V7s, I don't know how many inches up, that doesn't matter. Take a cable, What if it looks good to you, it's probably gonna sound good. You just have to make sure that they're the same distance apart from each other so that they're in phase. And a crucial thing about these sounds is I have my overheads angled towards the snare I don't have them straight down, and that captures a lot more of the vibe of the room, the vibe of the drums, and overall, it's going to make for 
I don't want to say a bigger sound, but there's definitely a noticeable difference when you're mixing versus if the o versus overheads angled versus overhead straight down. Because straight down, you're going to capture your cymbals mostly. And I find this way, I can lean away from the close uh, the, the close mics not the closed mics they're always open the close mics and lean on the overheads which is important for records like this because they didn't have as much fancy processing as they do now and so I'll do a clip of the room mic um, it's just in a little closet of mine and I find it gives a nice roomy sound so now we're gonna go over the tuning of these drums <laughs> So for the tuning of these drums, they're um, they're about a medium, I'd say. So you get they're higher than what I prefer sometimes, but I really like this sound. Actually, that's a lot. I do prefer this, but I really like this sound because they kind of stick out of the mix a little bit. And again, with the double ply heads and the medium tuning, you get attack and you get the body that you're looking for. And most importantly, they're wide open. You can put a little dampening on the floor, Tom, if you don't like that, specifically for this sound. Um, but they're wide open. You're going to let the room do the most of the talking because we're leaning away from the close mics on these records. Um, so those are the, that's the Tom tuning. Snare tuning is at about a medium, too. And I'm going to do uh, you know single hits just to show you guys what I'm talking about exactly. Snare tuning is at about a medium. And... This has to be dampened with like a wallet or something because that's just what I hear. Um, it's not definitely not wide open. And there's a video of Russ Kunkel playing with James Taylor at the BBC in 71 or 72. And he's got his wallet on his snare. So that's kind of that's the video I based most of this setup around on is those couple songs he does in 71 with James Taylor. And I'll, I'll toss a link to that in case you want to go watch it to see what I'm talking about. And for the kick drum. Kick drum is just, it's a basic tuning. It's a basic medium low, I think. And just a P3 over a ported rezzo head. It is dampened. There are, I think there's one or two towels in there, and there might be a brick. I'm not sure. Um, but those are the tunings of these drums. All right, so that concludes the lecture part of this course. We're going to move on to the playing part of this course. So I'm just going to play these drums for you uh, with no music behind them, just a couple of quick grooves. Going to go so you can hear what they sound like. And then we're going to move into some songs. I think I've got about maybe three or four planned. And these will kind of help you get into the head of Russ Kunkel and what he's doing. And I'm going to explain some tips and tricks that I've picked up from listening to these records. So without further ado, I'm going to shut up and I'm going to play these drums. It's record time, all right? I brought Sweet Baby James, I brought Tapestry, and I brought Jackson Brown's first album. And we're also going to go over uh, California off of Joni Mitchell's Blue, because that also uses brushes. But with uh, Sweet Baby James, we're going to go over Fire and Rain, and just tips and tricks, the general sound of the album. And then with Tapestry, we're going to save that one for the end, because Kunkel shares the bill on drums with Joel O'Brien, who's also a fantastic player and honestly perfect for that album. And we're going to go over Doctor My Eyes, 
off of Saturate Before Using. There's a lot of cool stuff, a lot of fun stuff going on in that song. So without further ado, here's Fire and Rain. Won't you look down upon me, Jesus? You gotta help me make a stand. You just got to see me through another day. My body's aching and my time is at hand I won't make it any other way Whoa, I've seen fire and I've seen rain I've seen sunny days that I thought would never end I've seen lonely times when I could not find a friend but I always thought that I'd see you again. That was Fire and Rain. Um, key thing about playing that song is, are these. These are brushes. These are Promark TB4s. I, don't, I couldn't find a replacement pair. That's why they're so beat up. But when you're playing with brushes, especially on that song, what Kunkel does is he keeps the snare drum very light. And if you've seen some of my other videos, um, I tend to rim shot with brushes. That's why they're beat up like this. And listening more and more, I realized that that works for my style. But when specifically going for a sound, it's better to back off the backbeat a bit. And same goes, well, actually, same goes for the kick drum. The kick drum's light. Um, so if you have a modern sounding kick drum that's very pointy and attacky, it's not going to sound the best. Because for that song, you want a little bit of body in the kick drum. Also, with the toms, the toms on most of Kunkel's tracks are big. They're heavy. They're out there. I think on Sweet Baby James, he's playing a white satin flame, a sonar. And that's I think it's regular sizes. By regular, I mean 12, 13, 16. But the toms are open and they're big. And that's helped by the, the plate reverb that you hear. At least I think it's plate reverb. Don't quote me. That's what I use, and that's what sounds right. Um, I used chamber reverb before, and it didn't sound right. So, takeaways. Big toms, small snare, a lot of body in the kick, and you want to keep your hi-hat light. You don't want to be... You don't want to be... We're not about that. That's not good. You want to keep it light. And, um, yeah, that goes for playing almost any Kunkel song with brushes is keeping it light. good without hiding you must help me if you can doctor my eyes tell me what is wrong was I unwise to leave them open for so long so with doctor my eyes it's a deceptively difficult song upon first listen and the first couple times I tried to play it I honestly I didn't I didn't do too well at it but I've been playing it for like three years, three or four years now. And a key takeaway that I've learned is keep it simple. Sure, it's a shuffle, but in the verses, really lean into the quarter note on the hi-hat, as, as you heard in the example. And then when you're on the ride, do both hands. Do both hands. Keep it, build it up. That's the whole point of the chorus. The chorus is a build up, and then it drops back down in the verse. But the swing is still there and that's the most important factor when playing that song or any shuffle song like that is you want it to swing another thing with doctor my eyes is there's conga on it i don't have a pair of congas here unfortunately but you can hear it in the beginning it's you know it's used as a driving force instead of coming in right away and it's layered with the kick drum i think and it's all throughout the track another interesting thing kunkel does on doctor my eyes is the overdub fills, and I'm going to put an example right here. And what 
that allows you to do is you keep the same groove going. There's no change in the groove. You keep the time going because you have no way to get to get loose, to get out of time. And that's important in that in a song like that where it's driving. It's building towards the fade out at the end. And that's really cool. He does that a bunch on uh, on Harry Chapin's Heads and Tails. I think on Greyhound towards the end he does a similar thing. And it's really cool because you can do you can pan it hard left and hard right and have this cascading, you know, falling down the stairs, triplet fill come in and then you're right back in the groove where you used to be. And that's what I find really cool about that song. The next song is Joni Mitchell's California off of 1972's Blue. Again, the use of brushes is employed, but Kunkel isn't, he's, he's doing his Kunkel thing. He's playing a, a backbeat with the brushes, and it just, it adds so much to the song. And for the life of me, I can't remember if there's conga on there or not. I think there is. You can let me know if I'm wrong. I feel like I probably am. But he stays out of the way. And when you're playing with brushes, like I said before, on fire and rain, you want to keep the kick drum light. You don't want, you don't want a heavy kick drum and light up top because that's going to take up so much space on the bottom, on the bottom end of the song rather, that it's just, it's not going to sound balanced. And that goes for a lot of my recordings too, is you don't necessarily want to, I don't, I don't like a lot of kick drum. And a lot of guys like a lot of kick drum. I don't like a lot of kick drum. And it might because be because I'm used to playing this music, which, you know, could be true. But again, light, light up top, light on the bottom. And there's really, there's not a lot of fills. There's an intro. Actually, wait, no, there's no fills. The only fill I do, and I don't think he does it in the recording, is to go from backbeat to 16ths on the hats. And that's just hitting the crash. So that's all you got to do. Again, keep it simple. <laughs> Streets are full of strangers All the news are you read Just give you the blues Just give you the blues And then we have Tapestry And Kunkel does some fantastic work on Home Again on Tapestry, and I chose not to showcase that. I chose to use Tapestry, specifically So Far Away, as an example of what to do when you're playing the music like this. And again, it's keeping it simple. There's no r like real fills. I'm not doing a coo 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 You know? There's none of that in there. I'm keeping it simple. Cross-sticking going along, hitting the crash. And when you hit the crash to, to music like this, don't smack it. We're not playing rock. We're playing soft stuff. So hit the crash so it has room to breathe and doesn't overtake the rest of the song. But there's going to be times when you have to hit the crash and you're going to want to... You know, you're not going to want to... If that made sense. I don't think it did. But those who know what I'm talking about are going to know what I'm talking about. You're so far away Doesn't anybody stay in one place anymore It would be so fine to see your face at my door Doesn't help to know You're so far away Yeah Just to wrap things up, um, 
Kunkel's sound changes a little bit in 72 when you listen to uh, Heads and Tails by Harry Chapin and um, Crosby and Nash's first record. The toms get more dead, and you can take the bottom heads off. I, I did that when I did those two records a while ago, and it kind of worked. Or you, if you have any sort of dampening, but the key part is is you want more attack than body. If the sound becomes a lot more closed, the hi-hat, or not the hi-hat, the snare drum is tuned way up from where it was on these records. This is more of like a medium tuning. It gets into like medium high, high tuning, which is really cool, the contrast between the dead toms and the high snare. Cymbals pretty much stay the same. And the front head of the kick drum definitely comes off in 72. And then he moves on to his big kit in 73 and 74. And that's going to be in part two. I just want to say thanks for watching. And if you made it this far and you want to see more videos like this, feel free to let me know in the comments. And I'll be seeing you on the next drum sound video. Uh -huh.